I too would like to acknowledge that we're meeting on the traditional uh, lands of the Kulin Nation and to pay my respects to their elders past and present. So I really want to commend CEDA on the release of the Housing Australia report, uh, which really highlights the underlying uh, factors impacting on housing affordability. It's an in-depth look uh, at the challenges and the opportunities in tackling housing affordability and also unlocking investment in the housing market. It uh, makes today an opportune time to look at uh, what works and what doesn't. It's a chance to look at the Commonwealth Government's National Housing and Homelessness Agreement. It's a chance to look at the underlying messages of the agreement, its paradoxes and, of course, the strings attached. It's an opportunity to have a sensible conversation about the delineation between the state and Commonwealth and where the responsibility for housing affordability actually lies. It'll be no secret to people in this room that the Andrews Labor Government has chosen to be a leader on this issue, with many jurisdictions following uh, some of our policies, and I might say without even uh, uh, an intellectual property payment. Uh, we are instituting real change and we're making a difference in our Homes for Victorians housing affordability strategy. And we're doing that through measures that seek to provide every Victorian with the opportunity for a safe and a secure home. In some ways, my federal counterpart and I are on the same page when it comes to housing affordability. We agree on the need to build more housing. We agree on the need to remove unnecessary obstacles that hamper demand and supply. Uh, the federal treasurer uh, talked big in the lead up to this year's federal budget. We were told his housing affordability package uh, would be a game changer. Everything from state governments uh, to homeowners uh, to those struggling to get a foothold in the market waited with bated breath. What, we, what was ultimately dished up, it must be said, was underwhelming. Uh, yes, there were some positive signs. Thankfully, they didn't go down the path of uh, letting young people tap into their super to fund a first home deposit, a harebrained idea that would have been calamitous for young people and the economy as a whole. We welcome the tightening of rules relating to foreign investors, as well as tax cuts for first home buyers and incentives for downsizing. But his announcement of a national housing and homelessness agreement exposed some fundamental flaws in his government's approach to this issue. The current National Affordable Housing Agreement and the National Partnership Agreement uh, on Homelessness uh, funding really provides critical support for some of the most disadvantaged and, might I say, vulnerable uh, people and families in our community. Stretching already strained existing federal funding to cover a much broader scope, housing affordability, planning and zoning, will have a real and concerning impact on homelessness and social housing programs, not just in Victoria, but right across this country. The Commonwealth's proposal to tie funds to planning and zoning targets not only impinges on our ability to determine our own policies, but it fails to provide additional funding to support the expansion. Um, this represents a significant shift in the federal government's funding framework for affordable housing. And it, it's blatantly at odds with uh, our own fiscal and policy autonomy. Each state and territory faces very different pressures at different times and needs a flexibility to adapt to these changing needs and deliver services accordingly. The way the federal treasurer see, seems to see things, most of the housing policy development should be outsourced to the states with no additional funding, but the state should be accountable to the Commonwealth. The way we see it, all parties are ultimately accountable to the community and to those most in need of affordable housing. Most importantly, the state and Commonwealth governments should play to their respective strengths. For the Commonwealth government, that means a focus on tax concessions, together with the laws around foreign investment. For us, it means the ability to implement our own initiatives and direct much needed funds to those most in need. 
That is why retaining our funding autonomy is of utmost importance. Our Homes for Victorian package was the largest housing policy offering in our state's history. Uh, we estimate it will contribute more than $3.7 billion to the Victorian economy and create something like 50,000 new construction jobs over the next four years. But its benefits extend much more uh, beyond mere numbers. Ultimately, it's about a fundamental human right, the right to decent, stable, affordable accommodation. This involves shifting the balance back to first home buyers rather than investors to alleviating homelessness and assuring up Victoria's housing stock uh, for future generations. Unlike the federal government, we don't just shrug our shoulders and put this issue in the too hard basket. We've listened and we've acted. We provided more than $2 billion in support for social housing, including a new social housing growth fund. This fund will provide an ongoing stream to deliver additional social housing for the most vulnerable Victorians. It'll build new social housing in partnership with housing associations, the private sector, the philanthropic sector and local governments, as well as financing a program where housing agencies lease properties from the private market. It's expected that over the next five years, the fund will support around about 2,200 new social housing places. Many of these new dwellings will boost employment and activity in the Victorian construction sector. A market sounding process was recently run by the state's commercial advisor, EY, for the fund. The Department of Health and Human Services and my own department, the Department of Treasury and Finance, are working together to consider these findings along with learnings from a similar fund in New South Wales to ensure that the optimal structure uh, and rollout of our new fund. Further consultation will be undertaken later this year. Our further investment of $1.1 billion in low interest loans and also guarantees to help build the financial capacity of registered housing associations uh, will increase the supply of social housing. Our guarantee program, the first of its kind in Australia, will allow registered housing associations to borrow funds for new homes at a lower interest rate. By acting as a guarantor, the government will help associations spend less on interest and more on helping Victorians in need. All our initiatives are decisive moves to unlock the housing market to deliver affordable, accessible, uh, and choice-based uh, housing. The median house price in Melbourne up 40% since 2012, uh, assisted no doubt by negative gearing, and it's essential uh, that we shift some of the balance back to first home buyers. The Federal Treasurer, remember, considers negative gearing, uh, in his words, an established and structural component of Australia's housing markets. Our abolition of stamp duty for first home buyer purchases under $600,000 helps level the playing field. We've already had more than 420 homes purchased by first home buyers since the 1st of July, and uh, uh, that had their stamp duty either completely scrapped or significantly reduced. Uh, this will help thousands of Victorians every year as we uh, now in the process, of course, of doubling the first homeowners grants for regional Victoria's purchases of new, proper, uh, of new housing stock. Not only will it help Victorians with their deposit and, might I say, an opportunity to remain in their communities, it has quite positive spin-offs effects in terms of regional jobs and economic growth. We've also co-purchased properties with 400 first home buyers who meet the criteria for a bank loan but are unable to get together uh, the, uh, a big enough deposit. Rather than having money chewed up by rent, the Homes Vic scheme will give them the kickstart that they need. Complementing this is the Buy Assist scheme, a private sector model built around partnerships between developers and home buyers. Another pressing issue concerns many of uh, whom are currently don't have the security that they deserve. 
The rental market is tough, particularly in Melbourne, where only 5.7% of new lettings are deemed affordable. That's why we're reviewing the Residential Tenancies Act, which is now 20 years old and, I might say, ill-equipped to cover the modern needs of both landlords and tenants. We'll facilitate five-year leases. We'll change the notice period for the termination of long-term lease arrangements and we'll extend private rental assistance to 4,000 disadvantaged Victorians. Through our Better Apartment Guidelines, we'll help ensure a better standard of living for those living in the inner city. Apartments now constitute a third of new dwellings being built, but many of those are constructed uh, in recent years have scarcely constituted uh, the definition of decent accommodation. We've cracked down on dog box apartments bereft of natural light, apartments so small you can barely squeeze a double bed in, ensuring a standard of development befitting the world's most livable city. I'm sure the issue around housing stock is of particular concern and interest to everyone who's here today. Given that housing approvals are at record levels, given that Victoria's population growth, uh, it is essential that uh, this process not be undermined by planning delays or by red tape. That's why we're speeding up development approvals in the inner and middle suburbs, zoning more growth corridor land for future development and also addressing the current backlog. We're also investing in the infrastructure and quality uh, planning to realise the opportunities of former industrial precincts such as Fis Fisherman's Bend and uh, Arden Macaulay. We'll work with developers and industry to reduce red tape, ensuring faster approvals and provide a clear framework for future growth. Central to this is Plan Melbourne Refresh, which gives everyone uh, involved greater clarity when it comes to Melbourne's continued growth. It'll mean new homes are built close to jobs, transport and community services. It'll mean wiser use of limited spaces. It'll mean, uh, more, it'll mean less urban sprawl. It'll mean that more land is opened up for Victorians to call their own. A lot of this may not be news to many of you, but it's worth reiterating to emphasise that we're not here to simply tick the Commonwealth's boxes. We're about taking a leadership position in areas that we are expected to lead on. In many respects, what I'm talking about is a fundamental breakdown uh, of the Federation but that is perhaps a subject for another time. That's me touting for another invite to a seat of function. <laughs> when it comes to our federal counterparts, what we are seeking is two-way accountability. It's essential that the states retain control over planning and zoning issues. Equally important is the need for additional federal funding for homelessness services together with social housing. It's essential that we get this right. I'm not saying that we have all the answers. This is the most complex of issues and there are no easy solutions. Uh, what we need is a federal partner that works with us, not against us. It's why I recently wrote to the federal treasurer urging him to compensate us for lost GST revenue as a result of incorrect population calculations. ABS confirms that Victoria's population share in the years 2011 to 2012 to 2015 to 16 uh, were higher than previous estimates. Ultimately, that equates to about $420 million shortfall, money which could be spent on infrastructure that we need for a growing state. I'm not holding my breath when it comes to this compensation, but I'm really just using it to highlight uh, the nature of uh, an open, accountable and transparent process by which the states are funded to go on and to do the things that are critically important for a growing community. But I, I remain cautiously optimistic when it comes to housing affordability. And of course, hopefully, the Federal Treasurer sees sense, lets us uh, play to our strengths, and also backs us to, up to his lofty ambitions with real, meaningful policy and action, and might I say, money. So thank you very much for your time.